Hi, welcome back. I hope you're ready for the experiment. Now, before we do it, I just want to go back to that first page to make absolutely sure that we've sorted out the theory behind this so that we've uh, not got a problem with it at all. So let's pick it up and make sure that we've got the experiment. Uh, it looks like we're out of that page. Doesn't matter. Let's make sure we've got it. Uh, I'll give it to you again. We wrote down that we had ammonium dichromate and it was Cr207 and it reacted to form chromium dioxide, or chromate, uh, chromium 3 oxide plus nitrogen plus water. So there are the products and there were four of those. Now the last thing that we needed to do that I didn't complete was to work out the oxidation number of the chromium. Now I've done it in the meantime and I hope you've done it as well. That's plus three, that's plus six. The nitrogen here is minus three and the nitrogen here is zero. So what we have is some very interesting things. Minus three going to zero, that's a loss of three electrons. So this is your oxidation step. It's a loss of three electrons. And this, your chromium step, is your reduction step. It's a gain of three electrons. So we need to understand that the same substance, this orange powder, di uh, ammonium dichromate, is a self-reducing substance. When you heat it up, it undergoes oxidation and reduction by itself. Now, the reason that this historically has been a very interesting element, uh, reaction in, in chemistry is that it behaves just like a volcano. Now, I'm going to spice up the volcano a little bit by adding a few touches of magnesium powder because when magnesium burns, it sparks quite brightly, so it will add to the effect. And then, just to get it going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few drops of acetone from this beaker. Not a lot of acetone. We don't want a fire in here. We've already got the fire extinguisher on standby. Uh, but I'm going to move the acetone down there and add a few drops of acetone to the top of our little table, which we're hoping is going to be the volcano. So what we're going to see is when I light that acetone is a really nice reaction. Let's see what happens. Okay, there we go. The sparks that you can see as it's happening, that was the magnesium. And here's the volcano as it grows and grows and grows. That's the dichromate going there. Um, and so what I hope you can see is that we've got a really interesting contrast. A small amount of, of uh, ammonium dichromate, which we started with, was orange, and now we've got the chromium oxide, which is red. And it looks like we've got some acetone that's starting to burn here, but that's not a problem. We'll just cover it over and take that away. Okay, so I hope you've got that. It's a really nice reaction. Chromium oxide has uh, undergone, has been produced in this reaction. Small amount has become a big amount, really like a volcano. And I hope you've heard it and seen it. Okay, let's just make sure that we've identified what is doing the oxidation and the reduction. Go back to the board over here in a second so we can see exactly what's happened. So let's just focus on this for a minute. We've recognized that the nitrogen has undergone oxidation. So what is the nitrogen doing? It, the nitrogen in that part of the chemical, is the reducing agent. Reducing agent. And the chromate, or the chromium plus six iron, is your oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent. We write it as OA. Very important to recognize that. If you get the uh, list of half reactions, the potentials, you'll find the dichromate ion is right down at the bottom. It's a very powerful oxidizing agent. So in the ammonium dichromate, we have both a reducing agent and an oxidizing agent. When we've added just a little bit of heat, 
we've got a reaction, a redox reaction to produce nitrogen, which we heard bubbling up, some water, and lovely chromium oxide. Okay, so we're just about to wrap up now. I hope you've enjoyed that experiment, and I hope you've got it right, that you understand the principles of oxidation and reduction, how to assign oxidation numbers, and uh, that you've learned this really well. Um, be very careful that when you're assigning oxidation numbers that you calculate very carefully. And it, does, it, it is useful to use the half reaction sheet as well. <laughs>